<coughs> All right. Let's have a look here. Let's have a look. Scorpio, this one is for you. Hello, Scorpio. This is Tarot Illumination, and this is your mini love relationship report, generic report for a bunch of people, a lot of people. May 2018. You know the routine. Watch for your sun, moon, and rising, or and or and or and or all three, whatever they are, and mush it all together and reinterpret. Also, if you want to stay ahead of it all, maybe even watch for your uh, significant other if you know some of their data. You know, a lot of people these days they automatically know their partner's. Uh, you know, birth sign or sun sign or moon sign or rising sign, things like that. So that's quite normal. Cards are well shuffled in advance, but I go to the last second so that you're a witness. No jumpers, no flyers, no oracles, no reversals. We're going to use the crucible spread. Okay. I kind of made it up just for this. And it's about you, Scorpio, a significant other, and the relationship itself. Okay, where it's on the understanding that there is you, the other, and the relationship has an energy, an identity, and a life of its own. And in a healthy, loving relationship, we understand that and nurture that and conduct ourselves in the context of the crucible, uh, the structure in which the relationship can occur as we intimate and separate. You'll see in just a second anyway. So, I mean, you know, before we get on with it, I wanted to do this. I've been doing it with all the spreads, all the, the the zodiacs. So I thought we might as well do it for you. But it is kind of a big deal uh, for you, Scorpio, this May, and also for Taurus. They'll find out too. But here's a look, have a look at this. Okay, Scorpio, May 2018. This is kind of a very simplified generic chart for Scorpio. So we put Scorpio on the horizon here. Okay. And look, kaboom, kerblam. We have May is your uh, time of year where it's the opposition. It's the full maximum opposition, 180 degrees. Okay, so that's as beautiful and good as it gets, and it's also as hard as it gets. Okay, you get the best and the worst of. So th the other thing that's happening, it's a very big deal uh, for uh, May 15th, it's a big threshold moment for the whole planet, and it's when uh, we have this very significant new moon, Taurus, Sun, Taurus, Moon together, and Uranus, the planet, is moving into Taurus for the beginning of a seven-year journey. So, <laughs> May, it's like you're walking into a whole new world, Scorpio, and a seven-year journey coming ahead of you in terms of the most significant relationship or relationships in your life, especially the ones that have a marriage type structure, a fully bonded, contracted, chosen relationship. So with Uranus, of course, you're going to find surprises, upheavals, uh, dramatic awakenings, sh shocking realizations, amazing, uh, like spontaneous, like miracle type things that tends to all these kind of things that happen with Uranus. So just be aware of that. I'm not going to read too much into it because this is not an astrology channel. I'm just giving you some data. May 15th is a huge threshold moment for all Scorpios. Okay, there you go. Also, by the way, I forgot. Early on in May, you're going to be dealing with the, I don't know, you could even call it a hangover effect from the full moon, the Taurus moon. Uh, sorry, the, uh, the Scorpio moon happening during the Taurus sun, right at the very tippy end of April, April 29th or 30th, I think. So that's going to have a two-week lag, like a leftovers period, going into the middle of April, leading up to this date. So please allow, dear Scorpio, that this May could be quite something for you. Uh, a lot of it, in some ways, very unpredictable. In other words, expect the unexpected. You might have done a lot of homework on yourself already, but still... Uh, there are going to be surprises that it's impossible to predict. So you might as well just accept that now. All right, here we go. This is this is enough. We've, we've, we've pretty much got it covered here. So I'm sorry it took so long to get to the cards, but this is a very significant month for you, Scorpio. Okay? 
That's for everybody, but <laughs> really seriously for Scorpios and Tauruses. All right, let's have a look here. Let's really, really do this. Okay, well, that was quite a freaky weird cut, I have to say. I didn't show you, but it was. I could feel it. Okay, this would be you. This is the energy that you would be radiating, some form or another. You're radiating whether you know it or not. Now, if you want to, you can even interpret this as a singles reading. If you allow for the laws of attraction, that you are pulsing, 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 radiating, 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 and then bing, echo, echo, echo. You get that. So this would be kind of like the energy of what if. Like, what if you're single, and all of a sudden, kaboom, something happens. This could be an example of what shows up, you know, simply because of the laws of attraction. All right? Over here is deep inside of you, deep inside of the other, and deep to the core itself, which would be the relationship. And it's here where the crucible is founded. This is the foot of the crucible, and this is the crucible, the structure itself, in which the relationship occurs, in which you guys can intimate and separate. Okay? Again, even if singles, like a what if. So we're going to look at circumstantial energy in a moment, and you're going to make the best of it, Scorpio. All right? Like we all have to. Okay, so we have the Seven of Cups here. So my feeling is, first off, you could be dealing with almost like a dreams come true scenario here. Uh, the question is, what does it all mean? Where is it all going? The other feeling I had about it when I saw the Seven of Cups here was wondering what the heck is going on. Like so many, like shiny objects, you know, that feeling like, like when you walk, if you think of a magic, if you think of Uranus and Taurus, Taurus, <laughs> Uranus and Taurus, if you think of Uranus moving into Taurus as walking into a magic kingdom, okay, where uh, spontaneous wonders can occur, let's just allow that anything is possible. Nothing's good, nothing's bad here. It's just uh, like a like an opening, like a, a chill, child's magic kit. You know, you open a little box and there are all these magic uh, tricks that you can uh, play with and enjoy and do amazing things with. So you might be dazzled. You might uh, be feeling like, oh, my gosh, what am I going to do? What are my options? What am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to interpret this? It could be very disorienting for you uh, through May, but that would be okay. Imagine you're going through this magical funnel where there's no escape and it leads to an amazing doorway and it's a very like sparkly magical doorway and you are ushered through the doorway there you go Taurus and there is this on the other side of the door and to me it's kind of magical and it's also an indication that this is a time for you to grab hold of the magic the way Einstein does I think of that as the Einstein card sometimes where he got the whole idea of MC squared by deliberately allowing himself to trip out, lying down in a boat, staring at heaven until heaven told him what he needed to know. So you can reinterpret that uh, in the context of a loving relationship. Okay. Let's see. What are you radiating just now? Okay. So with the five of pentacles here, you might be really, really, I would say, shaking, wobbly, scared of everything not working out it might be you know like when they do those big fantasy kids movies um you know the big famous ones and the you're going on this intrepid journey and these huge massive landscapes of big mountains and snow and never-ending clouds and then thunderbolts and lightning and freaky weird wild animals are everywhere and you're you feel like you're on your own heading into this trippy, trippy, trippy world. Um, no matter how bonded you might be, uh, the energy could be so, let's say, shocking and so disruptive that you might be feeling as though you're, at, you're heading into this uh, in a, from a very weak position, which would be understandable. It's very, very daunting. The whole idea of facing something so daunting could make you feel very intimidated, very much left out, very, very weak, very impoverished of the soul, very much lacking in resources to be able to cope with all of this. 
Okay, to me this looks very much like the fear of the moment, the uh, the fear of the ego, like looking at things from the egoic perspective, uh, and heading forward in a way where it looks to me like you're very aware that every decision counts. And like when I was talking about that you know, analogy of moving into this magic landscape. It's very, very beautiful, but it's also very scary because it's going to have twists and turns and changes that you cannot possibly predict. Predict So the only way you can handle it is by continuing the journey forward, 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 and letting things happen the way they happen. What about the other? Okay. <laughs> well, you're really lucky, Scorpio. Because it looks to me that you're dealing with a possible significant other here who is either fully understanding of this and they're not particularly concerned. They, you, they are probably very aware of your sense of intrepidation and fear of impoverishment of like, can you even handle this journey going forward? Have you made the right decision to keep going with this loved one? Are we going to end up crippled and impoverished? Are we going to end up full load, loaded with a chest of gold? Whatever it is. I'm not using the money analogy here too much, but the sense of wealth is important when it comes to Taurus. So over here, with Taurus radiating the energy of the sun, it's almost like, Scorpio, you can't go wrong. Okay? Sure, you have every right to be scared. Sure, you have every right to be um, dazzled and befuddled by the scenario unfolding before you, quaking in fear, perhaps, literally wondering, what the heck am I going to do? Where am I going to go? How am I going to do this? And yet, in a way, it doesn't even matter because this is what's there for you. The sun is shining for you anyway. And maybe you are relating with a significant other who is very, very strong, uh, perhaps not in the soul, I don't know, but perhaps in their waking day-to-day -day self, they have some sort of conviction, knowledge, and awareness that everything's just fine and everything's going to be okay. All right, Scorpio? So we understand your fear, but they are beyond fear. They're fearless. They know something. They somehow or other, they're directly connected to source. That's how it looks to me here. They're directly connected to source and they know stuff that you don't know. And it's almost like you're going to have to take their hand and go through, enter into this new place, this baffling, dazzling, confusing new place and deal with it. What's happening at the soul level? Okay, it feels to me that it's almost like reach the point of unbearable it's almost like have you ever felt that feeling when you're facing a new horizon a new journey and moving forward you know there's no going back and it becomes so overwhelming that you faint have you ever done that have you ever fainted and blacked out uh, because of circumstances I know they show it on movies and it's like you know a, a way of telling a story in movies but it actually does happen it's happened to me enough times to, to, to tell you for certain that it does happen, where you can literally black out in the face of fear, in the face of things you can't understand, the, the things that seem so overwhelming. And what it is, it's actually a defense mechanism. It's the way that the body dies before it dies. Die before you die. It's a very scorpionic thing. I'm not saying you're going to die here in this journey or anything. All I'm suggesting is that your soul is craving deep healing your soul wants deep healing your soul wants to create a very loving healing scenario with a significant loved one i don't know if you can see it here but there are two tiny little creatures here like they look like a tiny miniature six of cups like the soulmates coming together for healing and that's what i'm sort of seeing here it feels to me that it's like total surrender for you scorpio where you have no option except to go through this funnel, this energetic funnel where all the planets are guiding you. Everything, everything is guiding you towards this opening of the gate into a new kingdom, a new queendom, a new uh, environment over here. 
It's like a very magical place, a weird place, a disorienting place, to the point where you could black out. And the blackout process is uh, your body protecting itself, your soul protecting itself, just basically shutting down, just like, you know, how um, turtles do. They just clam up, all their limbs go inside. Uh, some plants do that. They just close down because it's too much and they just protect themselves. So this is this is fine for you, Scorpio. Don't I know these look like scary cards in a love relationship, to, but to me I don't see it that way. I see that as you need healing. There's so much love over here that you don't even have to question it. The only thing that's happening is your own doubts inside of yourself here, wondering what's happening and where it's all going. The healing that you need, the healing that you deserve, your soul is bringing that to yourself. The relationship is bringing that to you. I know it's going to happen here for you in some way, some form, and you need this. So if you are feeling like you're under so much pressure, you know, with this Taurus sun and the Taurus new moon here, it's going to be intense pressure of opposition for you, where to the point where you may not have any choice except to literally give up. Go home, take a rest, take a break, whatever you have to do. Unplug from the world everything in order to cope. In other words, this energy is so powerful, you can't you can't fight it or challenge it or change it. It's just how it is. And if it's too much, don't try and force it. Just handle it very, very gently, very, very lovingly. Self-love here. Deep, deep, deep commitment to self-love, self-healing. Okay? All healing is self-healing in the end. What about the significant other? Well, it feels to me that they are seeking almost the same thing as you, okay? In that, to me, it looks like they are seeking peace and serenity in the context of this loving relationship, just as you need love and healing in the context of a loving relationship, too. They have all the light. They're carrying it, and whoever this is and however they are. And so that's very good for you. Uh, it might make you feel a little bit intimidated in a week simply because this much light can be almost overwhelming, okay? And that could be that could be hard for the ego, you know? It could be hard just to handle it. Like, how come you got so much light and I'm feeling so miserable? Hmm? And then they go deeper. It's, it's like, well, it's okay, honey. Just This is just a chapter. We're going through a significant chapter around May 15th, 2018. Thank you very much. Terra Illumination said so, and every other astrologer and tarot reader will say so too. So let's just get used to it. And then you kind of go, okay, I don't know if I can handle it. I think I'm going to black out. Ooh. It's, and they, so they're like, it's okay. It's okay. I'm coming. Uh, we're here. We're going to do this together. It's a trip. We're going to move on. It's a healing journey. We're only going to bring with us what we need. The only thing that counts are the elements of what works for us together in this relationship. It looks like for you, Scorpio, your significant other is determined to seek peace and serenity, leaving behind anything and everything that does not equal peace and serenity, and avoiding, um, let's say, chaotic, three-dimensional, human type drama and instead seeking the higher ground the peace the serenity by detachment literally detachment from anything and everything that is not working for them in order to foster the love and the healing in this relationship here in other words you might have to rely very heavily on the golden light of a significant other right now scorpio and really trust blindly Okay, so at the core, what have we got going here? Okay, wow. Okay, well, in love and relationship readings, often, sometimes people see this as a marriage card, okay? Formalizing this. You might be shaking in your boots, Scorpio. They might be aware of you shaking in your boots. They are fully aware of all of this, and it's not freaking them out in any way. They're completely understanding of what's happening. Who I don't know how they're doing it, Scorpio, but with this kind of energy, they're handling it somehow. And it seems to be creating a sort of vibe or an energy where, like, the closer you guys get together, 
the more and more simple things become, where it is literally about love and healing, where the, the structure, like a very formalized structure of a relationship, you could even call it a marriage, uh, becomes paramount here, where it becomes all about writing or rewriting vows, okay, for this relationship. Now, you know, I don't know the details of your love life, whoever is watching this, but what I'm sensing here is that there is, perhaps for you, Scorpio, a very shaky experience here. And for them, it's maybe shaky too, because they're living in the same uh, circumstantial energy as you, but it's not freaking them out the way it freaks you out. And it's bringing you guys closer and closer and closer to a very traditional formalized type of structure in a relationship where you might have to literally face each other and establish some kind of code of practice for you guys to work together and continue together. In other words, bring some kind of sense of harmony and beauty out of the dreamlands here and turn it into something solid with a structure, a definable structure, core, mission, and a purpose that you could actually write down as a code of commandments for you guys. Okay, with the Eight of Wands here, sorry, the Seven of Wands here, to me it looks like, hold on, the screen just froze. I hope it's going to unfreeze. The clock is ticking. This is very, very weird. I don't know what's happening or why. I'm going to keep talking. Aha! That was freaky, people. That was freaky. Maybe it was like, a, you know, one of those divine coincidences to give me a chance to um, absorb things a little bit here. I'm just having a sip of my herbal tea. With the Seven of Wands here, to me it indicates that you guys are going to be fine and that you are fine, no matter how scary this might be for you, Scorpio, because... You're dealing with a significant other who can handle it, okay? They can handle it as scary as it might be for the whole situation. The whole situation, circumstantially, might be very disorienting for both of you, for the whole relationship. But they have something above and beyond what you can possibly understand, Scorpio. So in a way, you are... It's a very humbling experience. This could be a very, very crushing, humbling thing where you're literally taken to your knees here to get to this position where things migrate and turn into much more, more of a structured environment. And it will, it will tax you. It looks to me like it will tax you because it's almost like every variation on a theme of anything and everything that could go wrong has the possibility of going wrong. On the other hand, every variation of dreams can tr come true that could happen is just as much of an option right now. So it's very, very important to be aware of that, which is going to require immense courage on your behalf, Scorpio. And luckily, the relationship has this. It looks like you, Scorpio, are dealing with someone who is really very, very interested in a deep commitment and the willingness to find the peace in the journey to make that happen, the courage to go there and to live that out no matter what, no matter the challenges. Because it looks like the challenges are going to be coming at you, Scorpio. There's no question about it. This is full-on opposition. You know, in, in marriage structures, they say like marriage is like can be the best decision you've ever made in your life. Uh, but it can also be one of the worst decisions you've ever made in your life. So please understand that. Anything and everything is possible here. You're very blessed, Scorpio, because you've got this radiating somewhere, somehow, I don't know how they're doing it, from a significant other. So as scary as this may be, I think you're going to be fine, Scorpio. All right. I'll just put this aside over here so you can have it as a visual reference. Reinterpret however you want. You know, watch your sun, moon, and rising. Do all that trick. You know those tricks. All right. All the best, Scorpio. You'll be fine. Don't you worry. Bye.